Hey everyone, it's Nick from Nick's Crossing. Welcome back to the train room for a great video. Today we're going to be talking about the troubleshooting process of my nightmare of the 612 right here. So here we go guys, all aboard. All right guys, so I picked up a J-Class. It's actually one of my first J-Class locomotives from Lionel. And it's a great little toy train. I got her working perfectly fine as of right now. I wanted to do a video to show you guys what I had to do personally and some of the troubleshooting processes I went through to evaluate what was up with this model or toy train. So the J-Class 612 in my collection, this was actually built uh, in the United States. So it's got a big old Lionel built in the USA sticker. And I got her home from the hobby shop and I noticed some problems with her. It stopped smoking. Uh, the chuff sounds went away and some of the lighting was a little odd and the light burned out. So did a bunch of really cool things to get this locomotive uh, nice OEM and working properly. So we're going to go topside, guys, in just a moment, I'll show you guys what I did. But these are very easy fixes that you guys at home can do. I have confidence if I can do it, you guys can definitely do it. And everything is wired to a T uh, to be nice and clean. So we're using shrink, solder, all of that, so we don't have any loose connections or anything like that. So we're going to go topside, guys, on the workbench. All right, guys, so here she is, the Lionel 612 and her beauty. Look at that. So I already took the screws off of the shell or out of the shell so we can get to the frame. And which way does she want to go? She wants to go, yeah, we'll do that. There you go. There's that built in the United States right here. Look at that. Built in the U.S. of A. Love seeing that. And, guys, here is the... Uh, internal shell of the locomotive. So uh, nothing too crazy here. We have a smoke unit right here. Next we're going to move on to your reverse unit right here and then you have your motor. Big old Pullmore motor and this locomotive runs great. She's a little cranky but it's got that awesome Pullmore motor. So here's a side view of her right there. Now this locomotive would be easily upgradable because there's tons of room in the shell so you can put an ERR board in here, but I'm actually going to leave her stock conventional as of right now. And I love the sounds in the tender for the rail sounds too. Just sounds fantastic. So a couple of things here uh, that I did. <laughs> uh, in the shell, we actually have some LEDs for the headlight, which you guys will see during the run portion of this video. I did three LEDs. So there's actually one for the, the headlight up at the nose. There's also two for the number boards and everything um, easily mounted using hot glue on the inside of the shell. It looks great and actually painted the number board LEDs a nice amber color so you can see the actual number boards. Now originally, this socket right here in the shell, which is kind of hard to see, this guy right here was for a halogen light bulb. I wanted that out because the smoke unit, this whole smoke unit right here, is actually made of plastic so check that out really quick all plastic right there so that um, yeah not a not a good win right there on Lionel's part but it works and also this locomotive featured uh, the cylinder steam which is what this tube right here it's like a fuel line these tubes actually connect up here and then they go down to the frame there's another little inlet right there now the problem is these are old. I mean, these are pretty old, about 20, 25 years old. This is cracking. So look at that. It just disintegrated right there. I'm actually going to get new fuel line eventually for this locomotive. Until then, the uh, smoke unit's plugged at the top using hot glue to prevent any like smoke just billowing inside the, uh, the shell, getting all the electronics greasy and oily. Now, another thing with this locomotive is that the chuff sounds cut out. So what I did to uh, troubleshoot that, I actually took apart this right here. It's kind of hard to see, but right there we have our chuff switch. It's a cherry switch, and every time the smoke plunger back here, where my this hand's at, chuffs, it pushes up right here, you guys will see it move, and it triggers a normally open switch. So when the circuit's closed, you get a nice chuff sound. It goes ch. So that switch looks like this. Here's a cherry switch right here. You can hear the little click. And this is the old cherry switch I cut out of there. This was worn out, burned up, not so good. 
So we put a new cherry switch in there. So after I put in um, a cherry switch, I actually had a problem with the uh, chuffing still cutting out. So then I looked into some other wiring um, solutions. Now all of this is shrinked or shrunken in here, shrinked uh, wire, wire shrunk. <laughs> um, this is actually from me, this here. Also this green wire with this uh, wire shrink on there as well. It's all soldered, nice and tight. And that was to replace these right here. These are wire nuts. These were OEM from Lionel inside this uh, locomotive. And on the inside, it's all plastic. Now the crazy thing is when Lionel built this, they didn't put enough, um, I guess, wire to create a, a solid connection before they uh, inserted the wire in the wire nut here. So we were having a bunch of loose connections. So I replaced all the wire nuts inside the locomotive with this a solder joint. If I have to rewire anything, there's tons of wire in here um, to get off of, and I can actually redo the tether, uh, which is right here. I did some other magic to that as well. So the next problem that I realized was that the tether had a loose wire, and the wire actually popped out of the tether, which is right here. I call these the anaconda tethers. There's four wires. The outer two wires is this blue, and you get a green. These are for your chuff circuit that go back to your tender, which you also have blue and green coming off of that. Now this wire here um, was actually pulled out of the socket. Originally this wire was white, but the outer two were chuff wires to the tender. So what I did, I took this little needle tool, pried up on this plastic tab, pulled out that little contact and resoldered it. And to make sure it'll never come out again, I actually added some hot glue to the tether, kind of sealing everything together so it doesn't move around as much. Now that actually solved the issue. And then I opened up the tender and here's the mess inside the tender. So check this out. Here's our tether right here. You can see we have the white wire, which is the outer wire. Then we have the blue wire. Those go to the chuff unit. The red and the black wire supply power to the reverse unit inside the locomotive right here. You can still see that there's a red wire back here. There's also a black wire right here. Those go to the reverse unit, and those wires are then distributed to the Pullmore motor back here. Now on the inside of here, you guys can see right here, these were all wire nutted together. All these wires, you guys see all this shrink in here and all that work? Those were all full of wire nuts. So I replaced each one with a nice solder joint and also took a zip tie, zip tied them all together to get this nice clean look. So just that loose connection right there was destroying this locomotive because of these wire nuts. And I actually should redo these in the future. I just haven't yet. It's a decent connection. But everything else of this locomotive was fantastically um, well built. I mean, I'm very impressed with the construction of this locomotive. Even the heat sink and everything is uh, down to the frame to keep this board nice and cool. Because this soundboard actually heats up this is a rail sounds too, so you're talking 20 year technology plus right here. And uh, yeah, it's just a great, great little piece. The potentiometer works as well, and that's actually um, on top of the tender. There's a hole right there, and this little uh, hatch <laughs> is your pot to control the, uh, the volume. So I always crank that all the way up, of course. But yeah, so guys, if you ever have problems with your chuff unit, check out your connections in the tender, match up your wire colors. Don't be afraid, just do one at a time. You know, undo these wire nuts and just look at what you're doing. And just remember, you can always trace it back to the engine. So like I said, you know, red and black on this locomotive go to the reverse unit. And then your outer two wires go to the chuff unit. So hopefully that helped you guys out. Um, I'm just happy to have this piece running. And it sounds great and looks great. And everything just kind of goes back um, so simply because there's only three screws for the locomotive, two screws for the tender. So it's very post-war like. And a lot of you guys have told me that this 612 was modeled after the post-war 746. So I thought that was pretty cool. Now a couple of other things with this locomotive. I did try using a magnetic chuff switch. Now that was put up here. 
and this board actually gets so hot. There's a heat sink right here. These two little fins that stick up, they're made of aluminum. That's a heat sink. And then where the uh, cherry switch is mounted with two Phillips head screws or set screws, that is also part of a heat sink to disperse heat or dissipate heat of this circuit card right here. Um, the magnetic switch actually melted. <laughs> I put a magnet on the chuff switch. So every time the chuffer would bypass the uh, little magnetic switch, it would chuff. And then I ran it around a couple times and the chuffing completely stopped. And then the rail sounds card actually kind of burped. <laughs> and I was like, oh man, what's going on? Um, so yeah, that was a bad idea. Now, if you guys aren't comfortable of installing a cherry switch, which is pretty easy, you can actually take um, these two wires off the chuff switch, trace them back to the tender, and instead of running the uh, chuff through your tether, you could actually bypass it by putting a magnetic chuff switch on your truck and then put the magnet on the wheel, like I've done with uh, other rail, uh, rail sounds mods. And then you could run that instead of running that chuff, uh, two chuff wires through the tether to the locomotive, if you guys feel comfortable like that. It might actually sound a little bit more prototypical because you're only getting one chuff per revolution per wheel set. So look, let's just do this. That's one chuff and two chuffs, that's it. So if you put your magnetic chuff switch on your tender, it might sound a little bit better, but it's gonna be uh, not in time with your puffs of smoke. So keep that in mind. Now other things with this locomotive that were kind of annoying, as a side note, the smoke unit actually had a problem with um, the chuff um, baffle into the smoke bowl because there's two ball bearings that would float. One of the ball bearings actually got lodged in the hole inside of the smoke bowl because this thing got so hot. Um, it didn't smoke, so I had to go through and I just drilled a new hole. Uh, these are very hard to open up. These plastic smoke units are a nightmare. So I would like to upgrade this with a fan smoker in the future just because I think it deserves it. And if I do that, I might actually um, bypass the cherry switch up here and just do the magnetic switch inside the tender like I was talking to you guys before. Sorry guys, so hopefully that helped you out. Um, like I said, always check your wiring. It's easily traceable with these locomotives. Do not be intimidated by circuit cards. I mean, you can replace components if you really have to, I've done it before. But usually with these locomotives, it's just a simple wiring issue. And it's just plug and play, like match up your colors, look where things are going. Um, gotta read things like these cherry switches, you can wire them up as normally open, meaning it's open when the switch is closed, it chuffs. You can actually rewire it as normally uh, normally closed. So that means the switch is always closed until it's activated, then you get the, uh, the sounds to technically turn off. So yeah, you gotta watch what you're doing, but it's a pretty simple locomotive and it's just plug and play wiring. All right guys, I'm gonna reassemble this locomotive. We're gonna get her on the track and do an appropriate run session with the chuff sounds all working and all of that. Also do a sound demonstration for you guys so you can hear what uh, the main problem was when this locomotive does not chuff. All right guys, the 612's on the tracks, ready for some power. And this is a fully conventional locomotive right before the TMCC craze and all right, so she's in neutral right now. So here's the whistle blast while the locomotive is in neutral. Just does a really short burst. Now, if you get her rolling, let's see. You guys can hear that it's a different burst of a whistle. So without that chuff switch working, so while the engine's in neutral, you get these different steam blast sounds and compressor sounds and all of that and the whistle just does a short burst. And if you get a ribbon, you 
as you guys can hear, it does a different whistle. So, let's turn it back. All right, and it does the whole shutdown phase because I put a nine volt battery in the tender, recommended by you guys. And there she goes. So without that chuff switch, the locomotive thinks that it's in neutral, which is so important why you need to have the engine chuff, because if you're moving around, you don't want to hear like the you know the steam blow off sounds or the compressor. You want it to sound like it's chuffing, doing some hard work, get those different whistle blasts in there as well. So yeah, you know, I could have said, you know, the chuff switch doesn't work, but the engine still rolls and whistles and has a bell and all of that. But it's just that much better when things just work right. And guys, honestly, I'm going to blame this all on those wire nuts. Just a loose connection. And of course, you had the one loose wire on the tether. But after just that quick wiring job, I got this locomotive working just like the day it rolled off that US of A assembly line. So let's get her running with some cars. Got some PRR coaches back there and my Knobles coach because it is summertime. So here we go, guys. All aboard.
everyone. So that's going to do it for this video, troubleshooting and solving all the problems inside that J-Class number 612. She's a beautiful runner, smokes out this room. It smells fantastic up here. Just picked up this smoke fluid from Henning's Mark's scent right there. So yeah, let's see. Oh yeah, that's awesome. And it was the closest thing that they had to, um, uh, what's it, Big Boy Premium. They're out of that. Apparently there's a shortage of that. I uh, love JT's Mega Steam. Great, great products. Wish they were a channel sponsor. I only use JT's Mega Steam here on Nick's Crossing. So guys, reach out. And also, shout out the trains. Uh, they're not a sponsor either, but we were able to find these replacement cherry switches on trains with a Z. So I want to thank them as well for carrying so many cool parts and everything. Um, yeah, it was awesome. So uh, yeah, guys, uh, with these locomotives, always follow your wires. Check for loose connections or any of these pesky little wire nuts. Get rid of these. Just solder it, you know. I think Lionel put those uh, wire nuts in there so you could easily interchange parts. Like if the chuff switch went out, you just tear it out, put a new one in, uh, and just wire tie it back together. It's probably done to save time and also save time behind the soldering iron and save on materials. Instead of soldering, oh, yeah, we'll just get you a bag of uh, these little cheap wire nuts with not even a metal shroud on the inside. It'll be great. So 25 years later, Nick's will have problems with their trains. So it's all good, guys. So we got her fixed. She's rolling almost OEM standard and looks and smells great with that Mark's fluid. But anyways, guys, if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, always consider subscribing. Love reading your guys' comments. And the simplest thing, giving the video one of these really helps out the channel as well. Until next time, everyone, happy railroading. We'll see you next time. See you guys.